Hello, my name is Leo Weiser. I'm the director of The River. So I knew that I wanted to do uh, a music video using a Canadian band, and something that occurred to me was the Arrogant Worms uh, did some really good comedy music that was very evocative and storytelling type of music, and I thought, wow, this would be kind of great. And uh, so they happened to be coming through for a show, and, and I did the weirdest thing, which was to just Facebook them. So the Arrogant Worms actually did come and visit us here at the shop, and it was very, it was a very cool experience. The first thing that Trevor did was he hauled out of his backpack uh, a book that he had just published called, uh, uh, I believe it was Grimm's Fairy Tales, and uh, it, a hilarious book that he was self-publishing that I knew when I read that, that, that our sense of humors would align somewhat, <laughs> and that it was, uh, this was the right choice. Yeah, we write funny songs, and some of them are stories, and then some of them are just a funny idea dragged out to the, usually just to the point of breaking, and then hopefully the song ends by then. The River is the animation that we've done of the Arrogant Worms River of Snot. It's a 3D uh, stop motion animation. 3D is a medium where you're shooting uh, two sets of Im images, uh, and you're not only shooting them, then you have to figure out how to replay them back so that the viewer experiences uh, that third dimension or that Z dimension of space or distance. I was a little bit nervous about doing the river because, to be honest, even though the worms are going to hear this and kill me, I didn't really like the song that much when I first heard it. But as I started to see the shooting that uh, we were doing of the animation, uh, it totally changed my perception of the song. We settled on the river of snot, um, and uh, I've entitled it The River so that uh, we can play a little bit more on the joke aspect of it. Um, and from there on, uh, we created a piece. But yeah, I, I hadn't even really thought of it as a story song, The River of snot, but it is, I guess, a story. It's one man's yeah. journey. Into snotness, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll be honest as well. I never thought of it as much of a story song as an opportunity to, to say snot a lot. Um, yeah, which because it really is a fun word. So that was the germ of the idea. <laughs> that was the germ of snot. <laughs> See, you just yeah. say it, and it, it makes you happy. Yeah. It, it makes the cold go by so much happier mm. when you can say you know words like snot. The worms uh, are so good at uh, the songwriting that they do and the performing that they do, just to make people laugh. And we think that the animation with the visuals uh, just enhances that. The river uh, gave us an opportunity to explore the media and the mode of 3D a little bit further. Um, so in a lot of what you see, we've pushed the interocular uh, much further. Um, we've mixed the sculptures from being flat to three-dimensional. One of the first off um, items that I learned was the interocular distance and how to figure out how much space between the two images because we're taking a left eye and a right eye and uh, how your brain puts that together or doesn't put it together depending on how big the space is. Alyssa Moore, uh, for instance, it was her first stop animation and uh, she just watching her grow was a, an amazing thing. Um, She's a an, an, uh, very uh, talented sculptor, very, very talented prop builder. As you watch the movie of the river, you'll notice that there's a wide variety of different props involved and different uh, puppets. In the opening scene, most of the puppets are uh, small, flat-footed plastic creatures, and they were quite difficult to work with as they had to go over mountains and hills and different uh, brushed areas, but they had no movement in their legs. So they were constantly being propped up and quite a few of them, like you'd be halfway through the shot or there'd be one, you'd get the left eye, but then they'd fall over and then the right eye, they'd be dead looking on the film. So you had to constantly like make sure that they were very secure and set up on, on the set because they, they like to fall over. So with stop animation, you really you really have to think out um, the process uh, as early uh, in production as possible. Stop motion is a very 
time-consuming process. This actual process took from March, I would say, to the end of January. That was quite eye-opening to go home and say that you only had three seconds worth of film to show for your day of work. <laughs> But uh, that's the nature of, of this particular art form. So it was, it's a learning curve for me. One of the very first things after transcribing the lyrics of the song and starting to come up with some kind of concept ideas, uh, we had our uh, assistant from Ireland at that time, Denise Dwyer, uh, she entered uh, that into a new uh, storyboarding program that we had. And so she came up with some of the very earliest storyboards. Um, and then we handed this over to Amanda Rye, who uh, then took it and did some very, very concrete uh, builder storyboards from that. So Amanda is credited with a lot of the, uh, you know, formulating and, and making it more concrete. From those storyboards, uh, the shop took them and uh, Alyssa did a fabulous job of building the puppets uh, with Amanda and, and starting to really flesh the film out. So once, when we hit the, uh, the floor with the, uh, with the camera, there was already, it was already mostly there. Occasionally we had to build a little this or that as you know, a whim would take me or something, but 99% uh, of it was there. And in fact, with the storyboards, uh, it makes post-production easier because we have very little extra stuff. Um, um, the editor gets exactly what uh, what we've shot, and it's exactly pretty much to the storyboard. We've left little tags and buttons here and there, but um, it, it's it's very efficient process of working. So what's on the page ends up on the stage. In order to make this movie, there were quite a few people involved. Um, of course, Leo and Becky, as well as uh, there's three animators, so myself and Kristen and. Luke and also two fabricators, so Amanda Rye and and I both built the sets, and that's how much it takes to make this little movie. Alyssa just rose to the task uh, incredibly and and created a, a, an immensely uh, immensely. Uh, nuanced uh, film. So we actually, uh, on the lines of trying to be more resourceful, we actually used uh, for the opening and closing sequences parts of a set from some other shoots that we had done. You know, yeah, we could start from square one, but you know, you, you don't have the budget and you, you need to be really resourceful and again, think outside the box about uh, how you can get those visuals in the most timely and efficient manner that you can. So yeah, some of the, some of the sets you'll see in different, uh, in different, showing up in different bleeding art projects, but you know what, it's okay. It works for us and, and we own the property. So we're, we're good with that. And uh, in the end, it, every scene worked quite well with what we used. So we've again partnered with uh, the post-production house, Jump Studios. Jump was actually one of the very first, and I believe still the only in Alberta that is is doing 3D content. So all the colorizing is done at Jump, uh, the 3D convergence is all being done at Jump, and they're doing the final output and assembly for us as well. Uh, very much enjoy working with those guys. They're very creative in what they do, and they tend to push the limits as well. So the whole world of filmmaking and distribution has changed now, and we, we've been very cognizant of that even people that have been working in the film industry or TV for years are, are trying to figure it out when there's all this you know free content out there. We started shooting Skeleton Girl almost five years ago and 3D has completely changed uh, in that five years. It's not quite the rage it used to be. It's not the what they termed as the gold mine uh, that, that uh, was supposed to happen. Now everybody's into 4K and, and they're going well 3D is a dead fad which it is not. Absolutely it is not. Uh, it is a mode of, of viewing and, and watching media uh, that is very personal and very individual and it's absolutely as valid as it always was. Uh, the problem is is that filmmakers have not been trained to work in 3D and directors have not been trained or experimented to direct in 3D and that doesn't necessarily make for good 3D films. So we have a commitment to continue uh, exploring the medium of 3D and with the idea that we can still put out a good 2D product, uh, but 3D is very, very important to us. Leo and I have always been very cognizant of uh, how to be merging art and commerce. 
And uh, we, we have never been intent on doing our films just because we wanted to make films. Uh, to me, you, if you want to do it as a business, you've got to be doing something that is creative, but also at some point you're going to be making some money back. You know, Disney's a really interesting example because people are like, oh, Snow White, it was fabulous, and all, and all those early films. Well, those didn't make any money, I don't think, for years. And uh, they went through some very difficult times. So we're, we're really living that right now, but uh, the end game is, is to make money so we can continue doing what we're doing, uh, but putting some really creative work out there. My name is Alyssa Moore. We just called. What's your name? Again. Again. <laughs> Sorry again. Ready? Yeah. Action. What is it? That's a stupid question. It's something I could absolutely not have done with everybody's help. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't prep this part. Yeah. People need something. I'm gonna start crying. My God. No, I'm not doing this part. Somebody else has to do this. <laughs> okay, just really. Um, ugh. It's the cleaners. And that's it. And I don't know what else to say. So that's how The River of Snot became a new feature film.